What's up guys, my name is Max, and today we are going to discuss and review this 2001 Triumph uh, Speed Triple 955i. This is my personal bike, I've had this bike, this specific bike for about a year. Um, this is actually the fourth Speed Triple I've owned. This is a third generation, I've also owned the fourth generation, which is like the colloquially known as the 1050. And I'm a huge fan of these bikes. So first, we're going to talk about kind of the specs on this bike, um, and then we're going to talk about how this bike ties in, um, you know, culturally as well as where it fits in the kind of my motorcycle market. And then I'm going to take it out on the road and give you guys a, a little bit of a riding review. Uh, a little bit of a disclaimer, I'm still coming back from knee surgery, so the riding review isn't really going to be as extensive as it would have been uh, some of my previous reviews. Um, we're probably just gonna stick to this downtown area um, because unfortunately I can't spend too, too long on the bike just yet. But this is, I'm a huge fan of this bike. I love talking about them. I'm a huge um, Triumph guy. And I'm gonna show you guys today why this bike is hands down one of my favorite bikes of all time. So, <clears throat> Let's start with the basics. What is this bike? This is a naked muscle bike. Um, it is an open leader bike class. The engine is 955 cc's. It is of course a triple, uh, so three cylinders. Um, this bike makes around 120 horsepower and about 80 pound-feet of torque. Uh, the fourth generation 1050s um, make about 10 more horsepower, 12 more horsepower. Um, these bikes sound fantastic. They don't rev crazy high, like 9,500, 10,000 um, is, is about where they're going to tap out. But the one thing that, that is particularly nice about these bikes, even these earlier 955s, is they have a CAN bus style um, electronics on them. So I actually have tuned this bike myself. Um, you can download maps off the internet, flash them in your garage. It's very cheap, very effective. Um, and it really makes it kind of a good tuner bike. This is the third generation. Um, they made this from 97 to I believe 04. Um, and then in 06, the 1050s came out. I think there's a dead year in there where, where they didn't make the speed triple. Um, but this previous generation, it has traditional style forks. Um, so they are not inverted. On the fourth generation, they went to an inverted fork. Um, these have really nice, uh, really nice front brakes um, as well. In general, I actually prefer the ride of this third generation. It's a little bit softer. It's less aggressive. Um, it's maybe not as good of a sports bike, but in my opinion, for a city that's got a bunch of potholes and generally terrible roads, this bike handles really well. Um, and considering its age, when I got this bike, I actually rebuilt the forks with a slightly heavier uh, fork oil. I'm about 250 pounds. Um, it really kind of kind of helps offset a little bit of that extra weight. Um, you know, it's got standard sports bike tires. Um, it's chain drive. It's got the beautiful single sided swing arm, which is kind of a, a traditional speed triple look. Um, short stubby tail, decent fuel economy. I average about 35, 37 miles to the gallon with the exhaust and the tune that's on this bike. Um, you know, some people on stock bikes can get as high as 40. Uh, you know, it's not really a mile, mile muncher kind of a bike, but uh, it does, does pretty well for what it is. Um, this bike, uh, in terms of ergonomics, has been upgraded with a Corbin uh, driver's seat. Um, it's a little bit wider, a little bit more of a cutout here. I find it to be very, very comfortable. I've had the 1050s have a single piece rear seat. Um, also very comfortable. Uh, it seems to be molded a little bit better from the factory. Also, this has a fully analog dash in it, and um, it works fine. Um, uh, you know, the newer 1050s have a, a hybrid digital analog dash, which I think looks a lot better. Um, but these still retain the traditional, you know, round headlights. In terms of seating position, the triangle is somewhat tight. Uh, it's more sports bike than cruiser. This is more, um, think more GSXR than BMW 1200 RT or something like that. Um, it puts you in a little bit of a compact riding position. 
uh, but it ships cleanly, it ships quickly, and just kind of in general has a very taut athletic feel to it. The other thing I've always found um, about these bikes and the 1050s is they have a, a really well balanced chassis. Um, you know, even when you're hooping on it, you're picking up the front wheel, you're hitting it hard. This bike, in my experience, never feels unplanted. You always know what's going on on the road. You always know kind of the next direction you're going to. Um, and I, I find that to be a, a, you know, a really, really positive thing about this bike. Kawasaki Z1000, and in my mind, this bike was the best of all worlds, uh, especially at that time. So to put this into perspective, in 2001, if you went into a dealership and bought a uh, GSX-R1000, which is probably, you know, right up there as one of the fastest bikes in the world then, production bikes that anybody could buy, right? That bike only made about 160 horsepower and about 90 pound-feet of torque, if I remember correctly. This bike made 120 horsepower and 85 pound-feet of torque. So while this didn't have quite the top end rush of a fully fair race bike, this was very, very close. And this was designed for what I call like, you know, the urban assault environment. So medium to large cities, um, you know, you could do long highway trips on this bike, but it's nowhere near as comfortable as a fully fair bike. This was meant for crashing over pavement, um, just, you know, hooning it out in and around a city. And in that objective, I think this bike was the best. Um, the Monster just didn't have comparable power. I think the suspension setup on this is excellent. You know, the only thing that really comes close to this in this sort of generation was the MV Auguste Brutale. But again, that was kind of a more of a high strung, um, difficult to get parts for, and had a number of different problems with it that, that were unique to that bike. Um, this thing was good enough that uh, Joe Schmo, everybody can work on it, ride on it. Um, but at the same time, I really felt it was kind of elite in terms of Euro bikes. So that's how I use the bike. I use this bike in and around downtown Austin. Um, you know, it's narrow enough that it has no problem you know dodging between cars at the same time it's got plenty of power plenty of grip i can rip up the highway if i need to uh, and it handles really well off of the start it's got plenty of low end torque it's got a very very good soft feeling clutch and you just you take off and you go with this thing and i absolutely love it and so that's kind of where this bike is you know, if you're looking for all-out speed, this isn't it. If you're looking for a long-term highway cruisability, this is also probably not it. There are more comfortable, easier to ride bikes. But if you want a no-compromise, urban assault, big bruiser muscle bike, in my opinion, these are the way to go. In the used market today, you can find a 955 like this for in and around $3,000 US. Uh, a 1050 will push you up maybe $35,000 to $4,000 for a good uh, early one. 
and as high as seven or eight thousand dollars for a 2010 forward one. Um, they're all pretty much the same. The newer bikes have a little bit better suspension, a few more modern creature comforts, but honestly, I think this one, these late uh, 955 bikes have uh, kind of the smoothest, most supple ride. They're not quite as aggressive, but you know, if you really want to put some seat time in one, this is an excellent bike. It does great in traffic. It doesn't overheat. Um, the maintenance on it is inexpensive and it's easy. Um, really the only shortfalls are they use special clips on the gas tank. They become brittle with time and age. Um, and there's a company, I believe in the UK, that sells metal ones. This bike has actually been upfitted with the metal ones. Um, there are these clasps that lock into the gas tank because the gas tank is designed to be removed with the fuel line still in the bike. Um, that's kind of a problem. Other than that, um, I know some people have said that there are problems with the front brakes. Um, the pistons begin to get spongy. The pistons kind of are off center in their bores a little bit and they wiggle around. I don't have that problem with this bike. It's only got about 10,000 miles on it, so that might be. So if you have a higher mileage, one of these, and you start feeling spongy front brakes, um, a lot of times the problem is in the piston itself, in the piston, in the calipers themselves. Um, you know, remanufactured parts are available that you can, you can use to fix that. I'm a huge fan of this bike. I'm gonna show you guys why. We're gonna take it out on the street and show you how it is uh, in real life. Well, we're out here on the street, finally on the motorcycles. My first time riding in probably three months. Feels pretty good, I gotta say. So let's start at the basics. And the most basic thing, in my opinion, is ergonomics. This bike has a kind of a tight uh, triangle in terms of uh, how compressed your legs are. It's definitely more of a sports bike than, uh, than a cruiser or some sort of uh, standard bike. It, it, you know, I find myself scooting back in the seat in order to uh, get my, the balls of my feet up on the pegs. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm, I'm still having trouble compressing my leg all the way, so that's, that's kind of part of my problem. But the handlebars are nice and wide, they keep your chest uh, flat to, the, to where you're coming, and uh, you know, that's a very comfortable feeling. You can definitely add Renthal bars or bar spacers to a motorcycle like this in order to get you know, another 20 millimeters of lift out of it. Um, if you want to sit a little bit more upright. I actually prefer the stock position. I find myself kind of uh, at that correct slope. You know, you've got a little bit of arch in the small ear back and, and he just makes you feel confident and uh, the bike feels confident underneath you. And we're going to be mostly riding around in the city because I feel like that's where this bike really shines. It's got so much low end torque that it never, it never feels um, like you gotta rev it out or slip the clutch a bunch. You just kinda gently let it in and, and the bike begins to, to go forward. And you never never feel like, like you know, it's, it's strung out or you have to work it very hard. I love that. This bike's got a Black Widow exhaust system on it and it just found, sounds fantastic. This kind of leads me to the next topic which is panache. It's kind of subjective but I think this bike has the best panache of, of any uh, naked bike. Uh, especially if you combine it with a nice exhaust system. Everywhere you go people turn their heads and look at this bike. and It sounds mean, it looks good and it just it wants to be the center of attention all the time. And it's, uh, it ends up being very, very uh, obvious, you know. It's, and, and it's definitely uh, a bit of a chick magnet. So like, a lot of times if, you, uh, if you're riding around on a, you know, your run of the mill Jixer or R1 or something, pretty much the only people that want to talk to you about it are dudes. They're like, oh, how much power does it have? Oh, do you have the quick shifter? Like, did you know that, you know, Valentino Rossi did this and that? None of that with this bike. With this bike, it's only women. Women come up and talk to you because they see it, and it's it's like it's like the difference between having like 
a souped up Supra and a Porsche, you know, you could make the argument that the Supra is faster and better in a lot of different ways, but when you go and pull up to a gas station in a modified Supra, the only people that start drilling are other men. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a very different style than if you pull up in a Porsche. If you pull up in a Porsche, people just, they know that, you know, the guys will look or whatever, but nobody comes up and talks to you about it. Only women come up and talk to you about it, and they're like, hey, you drive a Porsche, huh? And, and yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. And this bike is, is very much like that. It, it inspires confidence. It's got a very um, athletic, aggressive setup to it. And, uh, you know, people know. They look at the bike and they know. Now, you might say, Max, you definitely sound like a Triumph Speed Triple fanboy. And, and the truth is, unashamedly, I am. I've had quite a few of these bikes. I love them. They're fantastic. Uh, there's, in my opinion, really not a better all-around bike um, for city living than this this right here. Um, either this or the 1050. I mean, you know, you can make arguments that it's not the best bike ever. You know, and there's there's certain things like long-term touring or all-out like racetrack stuff that. You know, there are bikes that are, are faster than this, more comfortable than this, have more features than this, but for rolling around a city and getting shit done and looking good while you do it, there's really nothing, in my opinion, that, that supersedes this bike. Let's see if we can get on the feeder road over here and I can open it up a little bit for you guys. See, even dogs love this thing. They're like, hey. Bro, I don't know what the f you're doing on the off ramp on a bicycle. That's a bad decision. But the suspension is great. I mean, the way I have it set up, it's just right for me. Yeah, listen to that. Um, anyway, this is the way it's set up is just right for me. It doesn't crash over bumps. Uh, for me, that's about 70% um, on compression and rebound, plus I'm running a slightly heavier fork oil in the front when I rebuilt the forks, uh, which makes uh, quite a bit of difference, in my opinion. Um, I'm 250 pounds, so, you know, if you're, if you're a bigger boy, then uh, it's, a, it's very much a worthwhile upgrade, considering how old these bikes are. A lot of times the forks are leaking anyway, and if you're going to pour something in, you might as well pour in the right thing. But the other thing I really like about this bike is it doesn't really get very hot. Um, even in the summer, it doesn't feel like it's burning your nutsack off, um, which is actually pretty impressive for an undertail uh, exhaust style bike. But even even the back seat doesn't really get all that uncomfortable. Um, you know, I've had I've had people on the back of this thing, and none of them have really complained about anything, uh, even though it blows fireballs on occasion. So you know. It's just a, it's a really well engineered, well thought out bike. And it, you know, it makes you a better rider too. You know, you're like, it gives you the confidence to kind of tackle, tackle the, the street a little harder than, than maybe you should sometimes. It does have a, a, a thing where it likes to be around five grand and five grand in sixth gear is going to jail speed. So, you know, the, there is that. Um, speaking of five grand, uh, this bike returns in the high 30s for me. I get about 145, 150 miles out of a tank if I run it, you know, right down to the bone. Um, I usually don't. I usually fill up around 120 miles. Translates to about 37, 38 miles to the gallon. Um, on a stock bike that hasn't been tuned up, you could probably touch 40 um, if you're a conservative rider. But honestly, you know, if, if fuel economy is your concern, a GS500 or something like that is, is going to do you a, a lot better than something like this. This is, this is not a fuel economy bike. This is uh, letting people know you're a bad man kind of bike. Um, you know, I feel like if James Bond had a motorcycle, like if Q was out to buy James a motorcycle, uh, uh, Triumph Speed Triple is what James Bond would ride, you know. Uh, it wouldn't be a BMW. It would be a Speed Triple, you know. 
they just don't have the kind of marketing money that that you need to get into a James Bond movie, I don't think. But uh, if we're being honest with ourselves, James would ride one of these. Hell, even the bad guy would ride one of these. The other thing that's nice is, from a social standpoint, there's not really a stigma associated with Triumph. You know, there's not the Harley rider, blah, blah, blah. There's not the sport bike rider, blah, blah, blah. You're just, you're just kind of above the fray on the Triumph. Um, and it's a good place to be. Above the fray is a good place to be. Anyway, that's my quick ride and review. My knee hurts, so I'm going to head back to the house here. But uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Tell me I'm a moron. I love that. Sh and uh, make sure you subscribe. There's uh, a few more bike reviews on the horizon. Uh, some other stuff as well as all my normal uh, project buildy things. I love you guys. Peace.